Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore. And in today's episode, we will look at that single element that nurtures and grounds a plant no matter how popular they are or how magnificent they look. The earth or in layman's term, soil. In this episode, we will look at the different growing media that I use in the garden, some soil amendments that add the nourishing touch to the soil, and finally, some aggregates that can be used in conjunction with soil to make it more conducive for certain types of plants. Let me add here that most plants can be grown in water too, but the primary anchoring unit is the soil for a majority of plant species in the natural environment. Now let's begin with garden soil. Now the garden soil is that soil you find in your specific region. Some regions have a very red soil like in the case of my city. This soil holds a lot of water and is clay. If you go up north, it will have a more greyish appearance due to the alluvial nature of the soil due to the major rivers that run through those regions. And soil is a major reason that determines what types of crops do well in a particular region. The major characteristic of garden soil is that it holds water and is easily available. So if you roll your soil like this and you are able to make a perfect ball, then it means that your soil has more clay component in it and you will need certain amendments to make it more free draining. Now talking about free draining, we will look at sand. Now, since river sand consumption is highly regulated in India, and rightly so, you get an alternative to it, the manufactured sand that is made from crushing stones like this. This is a superior construction sand and can be used in gardening as well. The major reason why people use sand is that it does not hold water as much as the garden soil and is more free draining. Sand and soil have always been a part of gardening since ages. Now let's look at a new entrant in the gardening scene, coco peat. Now coco peat is made from coconut husks and can be used even without adding any soil or sand but unfortunately is nutrient deficient and must be amended with compost to make it more plant friendly. The coco peat is both water retaining and at the same time allows the roots of the plants to breathe due to its high porosity. Now though biodegradable, there are a lot of sustainability issues and pollution this can cause in the wetlands, a topic of debate we will keep for another video. So in the market you get the loose coco peat in packets or a much cheaper alternative is that you get a coco brick like this that you can add water to and the whole brick will disintegrate and give you your soil media in a matter of minutes. And it's also fun to see the brick fluff up so this can be a great gardening activity for your kids too. So these were the main growing mediums per se in which my plants grow. So now let's look at the amendments that enrich the soil or improve the soil mechanics. Ideally, coco peat is an amendment that aerates the soil, but looking at its extensive use as a new age soil media, it is for now under the soil medium headline. When you think of enrichment, the first thing that comes to your mind is compost. Compost is a component that is derived from the decomposition of organic matter. The end result of all this is a black humus that is otherwise called black gold. Now the ones you get in the market are well sieved and they look like this and the ones that you make at home will look like this. Now both can be used how much ever you want in the garden and you can use it as a top dressing or mix it with other growing media like sand, coco peat or garden soil. Compost also helps with aerating clay soil and is by far the best amendment that adds nutrient into the soil as well as keeps the soil well draining. It adds microbes into the soil and helps in carbon sequestering that has been found to help in the fight against global warming. A more organically rich soil will attract earthworms, soil isopods and other beneficial garden helpers. Now, all your kitchen waste can also be directly added into the soil without composting it if you have outdoor plants. But avoid adding raw kitchen waste in your indoor plants. This could attract fungus, fruit flies, etc. For more interesting details on the whole composting process, click the link above. Now, let us look at manure. 
Now, manure is the dung of mostly herbivorous animals that we use in the garden. And the two most common manure you can find are the cow and the goat dung. Cow dung mostly has 3% nitrogen, 2% phosphorus and 1% potassium. Goat manure mostly has 1.35% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus and 3% potassium. One thing you must remember is that especially in edible gardens, you must not use fresh dung of any animal. These fresh animal wastes are rich in pathogens and can enter the food chain. So buy a well-decomposed cow dung from a trusted source like this one. The product link of both goat and the cow manure are given below. Getting fresh cow dung and composting it yourself can be cumbersome, so such packaged, composted or aged manure is better. Fresh dung is also rich in ammonia and nitrogen that can burn the plant. Now, manure, though organic, cannot be used in high quantities like compost. You may want to be more measured with the addition of such nutrients. Add it away from the roots of the plant as top dressing or mix it with the potting media in small quantities. Now, compost or manure, if added as mulch in indoor plants, may result in mold formation and many of you won't prefer that in your home. So, to avoid this, we use liquid amendments like seaweed fertilizers, fish emulsions, etc. Here, we will talk about seaweed solution because fish emulsion can be very stinky. So, seaweed solution comes from the extracts of seaweed you find in the oceans of the world. They consist of marine plants and algae and as an NPK of 001, so the macronutrients are not something to brag about here. But its charm lies in its micronutrients and hormones that are equally important for plant growth like auxins, cytokinins and gibberellins that are plant growth hormones. The high concentration of cytokinins especially help promote cell growth and performs other vital functions in the plant's overall growth. You can either apply this into the soil or use it as a foliar spray. Take around 3 ml of the liquid, add it in a litre of water, mix well and use. During summer months, you can apply it twice a month for indoor plants. Seaweed can be costly and I would suggest you stick to compost for your outdoor plants if you have a large collection of plants. If you want to purchase the same seaweed as I do, the link is given below and do not forget to read up on the transparency clause before purchase. Vermiculite Vermiculite is a hydrous phyllosilicate mineral. It does not add any nutrients per se into the soil but helps improve aeration in the soil and has a very good water holding capacity as well. Compared to vermiculite, the perlite is more lightweight and is dusty for someone like me who suffers from dust allergy. So vermiculite is the better option. Now let us talk about aggregates. Now, technically, even sand is an aggregate, but since I'm not covering civil engineering, let's stick to gardening. So, first up, we have charcoal. So, charcoal per se does not add any nutrients into the soil, but it helps aerate the soil and is an excellent soil amendment for aroids, succulents, orchids and other plants that love well-draining media. Charcoal, especially activated charcoal, has the ability to absorb noxious substances in a closed environment like terrarium. It is better you break the charcoal into manageable pieces before adding them into the soil. Gravel and other coarse aggregates Gravel can improve soil mechanics by aerating the soil. I would advise you to use smaller size gravel or coarse aggregates like this for propagating cuttings and seeds. Cinder Cinder is another component that can be used. This is used as packing material in the construction industry and is lightweight. Coconut husks. I use them especially for my orchids and they act as a substitute for a tree bark for most epiphytes and my orchids have always done well. Coconut chips are also excellent for orchids and aeroids. So with this, we will end this part 1 episode of Soil Media Basics and in the next part, I will cover the potting mixes for different types of plants. So stay tuned. And let me digress here by giving you all a sneak peek into some of the eco-friendly changes I'm making one step at a time. And this one is with straws. 
So I generally don't use straws to drink coconut water, but just because I don't use it, I don't think I should foist this idea down the throat of people who feel comfortable using them, especially the older people. So for my mom especially, I've bought these metal straws that she can carry when we are traveling and can rest assured of making our trips more eco-friendly by shunning something as simple as a plastic straw that has profound impact on the environment. So if you're interested, the product link is given below and you can read the transparency clause before you buy the product to make an informed choice. So I've decided that I would be making these eco-friendly lifestyle changes over time and will share it with you in some of my videos like this. And do give me your honest feedback about this by commenting below. And with this, we've come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore and I really hope you enjoyed this particular program. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. And always remember, to grow slow is to grow well. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.